Hello guys, I did talk about the box office here, and Spiel on Tame is actually going and wine over what they predicted, but Conswing opened with 9 million, which is higher than I expected, than that, of course they expected, Conswing opened with 9 million, which means that's going to probably be, okay, I can do the math here, so 9 million, so second weekend always dips a bit, always, second day always dips a bit, around 7 million, because that includes like the previews and stuff, as well, Spear is projected to grow 6.8 million on Corn Box Office Bozo, but it could do a bit better, like 7 million, which is what they projected it to open. But again, Scott Mendelson said it was going to only open at 5 million, so it's being Scott Mendelson's predictions, but you know, his predictions are not that the greatest. He said, Oh, we the Power Angels, Sonic would flop. He said, All these movies would flop. You know, we have the we can compare it to like the Nun. Was was open with fifty three million, so it's not opening with fifty three million. That's for sure. Mortal Kombat. What did open Mortal Kombat open with? So it's gonna open in line of Mortal Kombat. It's opened around twenty three million. Okay, but Mortal Kombat was not really then had terrible and abysmal legs at the box office. Mortal Kombat had abysmal legs at the box office here. It only made eighty one million worldwide. So. Conjury is going to probably open above Mortal Kombat around 25 to 26 million domestically. And which, which was high, which was in line of my predictions, 25 to 40 million. So that means, yeah, so that means I won on my predictions again. And of course, the box office gurus who, and they don't have any, they don't have any data for Quiet Place yet, which is completely odd. They have data for Cruella. Which is projected to open like around 10 million. Said second weekend. Which is around a 57% drop. Which is like around an average drop for a movie. So Cruella's drop is having an average drop at the box office. So it might not be as doing as good as Disney hoped it was doing. Yeah, 57% drop. So I, I would assume that will be the same for Disney Plus numbers as well. A 57% drop. For this movie, which isn't a good sign for Disney because it only opened with like 600,000 households. Some people say it's around three, someone said it was around 3 million worldwide. Which, if you, yeah, of course, I only did America numbers. Which means, you know, I did the math for free. I could do the math for free. I guess, for even, because I don't know, the prices do vary in different countries as well. For example, in India, I think it's a different price. But I think all of them equal to around forty dollars. So that's three million, and you know, people who bought the premium thing worldwide, that's gonna probably be like a fifty-seven percent drop for that. So second week, so it's probably it's gonna probably be higher because that be because most of the people who pay the premium service out of Disney fanboys are the ones who pay the premium service for these movies. These I think it's gonna be a bigger drop on Disney Plus because. Not many people are going to pay forty dollars to see this movie. If they're gonna pay forty dollars, they're gonna go to the theaters and go see it there. And yeah, we can put the comparisons between Cruella and the other movies. But yeah, Quiet Place doesn't. I'll update. I'll do an update with Quiet about Quiet Place here. But yeah, we could put the comparison movies here. Yeah, you know, so Alita, Battle Angel, Mercy and Mrs. of Evil, Dark Phoenix. I don't think Dark Phoenix is really eligible for this comparison anymore. Yeah, you know, Alita is ahead of Alita, behind Maleficent and Pods of Prey. Hey, and is also slightly ahead of Man Black International. So it is behind, <coughs> it is ahead of Alita, but it's behind Maleficent. It is ahead of Dark Phoenix. We can just remove Dark Phoenix from this altogether. And stop using Dark Phoenix because really it's, a, it's such a bad comparison for any movie to use Dark Phoenix. Unless it's an absolute abysmal box office failure. But another good comparison is Doolittle. Doolittle had a similar opening to Cruella. You know, and Doolittle is doing slightly worse than Cruella. You know, we have Cruella here. You know, you know, that's, that's the blue one. And it's doing most comparable to Doolittle. And Man Black at the National. Those are the best comparisons for how Kuro end up doing. Which means Doolittle 
widow, which of course that was cut short by the pandemic, it would probably wake out to around $80 million if it wasn't for the pandemic. So yeah, two hours could probably end up grossing similar demand bracket to Nasdaq's gross, which is around $80 million. And it might even out, it might even get up to Elite Battle Angel and Birds of Prey. It's probably not gonna beat Worth the Business of Evil for the hundred million dollar domestic gross here. But it seems that there are some there is some word of mouth being spread around Cruella for Cruella, where it is good for that movie as well. I'm gonna put Dark Fate in. And Dark Fate didn't really make that much, but yeah, Dark Fate's another comp opening here. You know, and yeah, Dark Fate, you know, but Cruella had a four day weekend. Dark Fate only had a three day weekend. That's the big comparison. Yeah, Cruella is actually outgrossing all of these movies besides Birds of Prey. Prey on Friday. Besides Birds of Prey. And that, again, when Birds of Prey on the second weekend, that was a holiday. But afterwards, Birds of Prey just faltered and just declined, basically. And I think Birds of Prey would have actually passed the reader domestically if it wasn't for the pandemic. It would have probably rigged out to $90 million domestically. We, we, which would have still been, it still would have been a success. The movie barely made money. We, me. And they're not making a sequel because they they don't see any you know, potential in Birds of Prey, which is good because I won't have to watch a sequel to Birds of Prey. Thank God for that, but here we go, box office here. They don't have any numbers for A Quiet Place Part 2 here. So A Quiet Place Part 2, do and yeah, Conjuring, I won't really know any comparison for Conjuring, probably besides the entire other Conjuring movies. I think a good comparison for Conjuring would be the... At the not Mortal Kombat. Mortal Kombat is a bad comparison. Sin would you know go into the Conjuring universe would be movies like The Curse of War Warona, where The Curse of War Warona opened at twenty six million. That would be a perfect comparison for the Conjuring. The Devil maybe do it. It is competing for a quiet place, but still doing pretty well as well. And Spirit is doing in wine with those predictions, but it will pro it has a forty million dollar budget, so we're going to see if Spirit will be a flop or not. But it seems that Conjuring likely will not be a box office failure. Conjuring has a budget of around forty nine million, which is very big for a Conjuring movie, but it's small in the scheme of things. Conjuring will probably make back its money at the end of its box office lifespan, even if it has bad rigs or not. It will probably open to around 48 million worldwide or something like that, half domestically and half internationally. It will probably end up around 120 to 150 million worldwide, which means it will still be a success. Spirit, we're going to see how well it does internationally. That will be the thing. Spirit and how well it rigs out domestically. I think the best comparison for Spirit is Raya and the Last Dragon. I think it's probably the best comparison for Spirit. So we have Spirit compared to Wire. It's doing the same, similar to Wire. Actually, it goes up on Saturday. I forgot it goes up on Saturday. So it probably opens similar to Wire in the last Dragon. It's actually it's over the 7 million they predicted for the movie. It's got to open at 8 million. I, I think I was overestimating this movie. I felt it was like 10 to 15 million. But that was because I said there was no movies for younger audiences. I did forget that Wire still existed. And it's going to be competing with Raya and the Last Dragon. Yes. And of course it's going to be competing with Peter Rabbit. Very, very shortly as well. Peter Rabbit is coming out in a week. As well. So yeah, Peter Rabbit will be its main competition. Boss Baby as well. Where it comes out in July. In the beginning of July. Here we have Spirit Untamed. Is a, is a comp movie to Raya. And Raya actually opened in row of feeders. Here. And Raya will probably end up around 60 million if it continues with these rigs that it has. But again, Raya came out when there were no movie, no similar movies to it. And not many people are going to watch an R-rated movie. Okay, not, no parents are going to make the 
Very little parents are going to take the kids to go out Mortal Kombat or Demon Slayer. But I believe both are R-rated. I believe both Demon Slayer and Mortal Kombat are R-rated. So with the options, lack of options, families now at least have another option and Spirit Untamed. And also Peter Rabbit is coming down the road as well. And yeah, some parents are probably taking their kids to see Cruella as well. So, yeah, so, yeah, that's basically about this video. So, yeah, next weekend is Peter Rabbit. I predict that will probably open to like 20 to 40 million. Probably similar to the first movie. It'll probably grow similar to the first movie. We, we, not, again, this movie had, Peter Rabbit has like mixed reviews or something like that. You know, like the first movie. But it will probably overall be a success and be another Keystone movie for the box office revival. Same thing with Into In the Heights, which will be for more older people. I think that will actually be number two to Peter Rabbit. And Peter Rabbit will probably be number one at the box office. Hitman's Life Bodyguard will probably is the only movie actually coming out that week. It will probably open similar to the first movie, which was $20 million. The first movie opened like $20 million. So the second movie will probably open to $20 million as well. F9 will probably be the first big movie of the of the year since Godzilla and Cry actually since Quiet Place. But it's, yeah, Hitman's by God. The first one, I think. Yeah, the first one opened with 21 million. And Hitman's by God will probably the second one will probably open with the same similar opening, 19 to 20 million. I don't think it's gonna break the box office, Hitman's by God. With the first one open to gross 183 million. Yeah. And 40 million on Blu-ray and DVD. So, yeah, Hitman's Bodyguard and Hitman's Vice Bodyguard will probably... Hitman's Vice Bodyguard, I think the best comparison will be the first movie. Same thing with Peter Rabbit. The good thing is that most of these movies are sequels. So we can compare them to the first movies. Okay, Conjuring we can compare it to the entire Conjuring universe as well. We can compare it to the entire Conjuring universe as well, which is a pretty good idea to do. Yeah, the Conjuring's at nine million domestically, so I don't think Conjuring shows up. It's Conjuring that will maybe do it shows up. Yeah, I don't they didn't add it yet. But I think what a good comparison would be the Curse of War Warner in its first weekend, at the very least, because the Curse of War Warner opened with twenty six million. I think the Conjuring that will maybe do will end up over twenty six million. And this is another simultaneous release on HBO Max. It seems that people are not are done with streaming. Okay, people want to go out and do things. Of course, Disney does not understand that. That's why Ruka is still only streaming. You know, which is going to backfire them at the end of things. Things, because they're always wire in feeders. They're always dis in feeders, but not, you know, Ruka, which is, excuse me, completely strange. Because Pixar sells movies based off the brand alone. Which means, yeah, Boss Baby 2 and Peter Rabbit 2 are going to be the ones continuing to the revival of the box office. Meanwhile, Disney refuses to release Ruka and Fetus, which is completely ridiculous. Meanwhile, the bot, they, they, pushed back, they pushed up the Boss Baby. I, I know nobody has Peacock, so it's going to probably do well at the box office. Okay. Because no, cause I think, I don't know how many people actually have Peacock, but I don't think many people really have that streaming service, which... Peacock, I think, is made by, um, yeah, made by, of course, you know, I think it's made by Comcast. Yeah, I think it's Comcast owns it. And, yeah, they have, like, Harry Potter on it and stuff. Some lots of really old movies on there and some, like, TV shows that, like, they picked up as originals. And, yeah, the Blu-ray charts have not updated this in a long time, so this doesn't really matter, you know. But we still have we are still waiting info on a quiet place. I can see if Box Office Mojo has an update on that. See, on Box Office, it, Box Office Mojo doesn't have an update for that either. They only have an update for Spirit. <laughs> they only have Box Office for Spirit. That's all they really have. It's Box Office for Spirit, which has a body billion dollar budget similar to Captain Underpants. Captain Underpants still opened like twenty million dollars domestically and ended up grossing like eighty million well domestically. And yeah, animated movies usually typically have better rigs. Even the emoji movie ad rigs. I'm gonna go up with the emoji movie, which also opened to like twenty million 
as well. But yeah, the numbers of Splatoon in this field only grows to like 83 million. <laughs> the numbers really said like Scott Meadows said it would only grow to 3 million. So Spiel is overpowering though. Predictions again, 5 million. It's grossing 7 million. But some said 7 million. And some even said 8 million. So yeah, even the Emoji movie had legs. Even the Emoji movie. One of the worst movies of all time had decent legs for an anime because it's an animated movie. Because animated movies appeal towards one audience, and that's, you know, as well. Same thing with Captain Underpants, which also came out in 2017, and also came out by DreamWorks. Look, CL. <laughs> and yeah. And yeah, Spirit was one the old DreamWorks roller. Oh, actually, 73 million. It opened to 23 million. So Captain Another Planet didn't really have as great legs as other movies. But again, they released it against Wonder Woman, which was probably like the worst idea ever. <laughs> they released it against Wonder Woman. <laughs> like, why? Why did they release it against Wonder Woman? They could have released it a week earlier against Baywatch and Pirates of the Caribbean. But Wonder Woman, or at least the week after with The Mummy, which nobody gave a crap about that movie. That movie was a total failure. Okay, they could have released it against The Mummy. <laughs> against the freaking Mummy with Tom Cruise. That was a big failure. I, I don't want to see. I don't want to see The Mummy with Tom Cruise. I don't want to see that. But yeah, that movie was a big, massive flop. We all know what it was. Or they could have released it against... You know, you know, later on in the in the month with no movies, you know, which was you know August, which they had Dark Tower, Animal Creation, The Nut Job Two, Hitman's Bodyguard, and then we had the next two weeks with those no releases whatsoever. They could have released on this week. There was really no new movies this week. Really no new movies. Please. But no, they decided to release it against Wonder Woman. Of course. Of course, they released it against Wonder Woman. At the box office. Cows Free. Yeah, Cows Free was a disappointment of a movie. Cows Free had abysmal legs, too, not surprising. Cows Free had abysmal legs. But usually, animated movies have amazing legs. Why it had amazing legs? Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse is another one. Or oh, I didn't put Spider-Man. Spider-Man to the Spider-Verse. They st <laughs> I'm just going to put Spider-Man then. If they want, we want to be a bunch of assholes and not put... For all the Spider-Man movies. It's gonna probably put the 2001 Spider-Man. Oh, this holds all the Spider-Mans. So Spider-Man, the spider Oh, they want you to put Spider-Man to the Spider-Verse 3D. Yeah, Spider-Verse to the Spider-Verse had five... This is the vagues for Spider-Verse, yeah. If people actually like it... If an anime movie is actually well-received, this was gonna probably be the vagues for the movie. Again, it did release on a holiday. So it did help the movie somewhat because of the holiday. And it did have a random increase... In the feeders. Probably because of the Oscars. Over it. Yeah, Spider-Man and the Spider-Verse. You know, same thing with... How to Trade Dragon movies. They had pretty... That's when they didn't have good wigs. That's surprising. How Hidden World didn't have good wigs. At the box office. But yeah, How to Trade Dragon, the little one did. Have pretty good wigs at the box office. Yeah, 4.98. For How to Trade Dragon, it opened for 43 billion, and this was the How to Trade Dragon's legs. Legs here. So, Spear could over, could do, could wig out to like 20 to 40 million domestically and 70 million worldwide, and it will still be a success. So, yeah, DreamWorks it is a small budget movie, so it'll probably make back its money if it does. It's, we only have to do is what we have to talk about is how, will it do well internationally? That's the real thing. And DreamWorks has a bunch of other movies coming out. Boss Baby, Spooky Zack, Zack and the Bad Guys are all DreamWorks upcoming movies. I think they're going to reveal more movies upcoming. 
So yeah, Madagascar 4 and Mice and Mystics are two movies that will probably be coming out next year. Wouldn't be surprised. But yeah, they usually release two movies a year. Sometimes zero movies in 2018, but for some reason there were no DreamWorks movies in 2018. But they usually release at least one to two movies a year. There was, some, there was one time where they released three movies a year, and I think, yeah, How to Trade Dragon, Bag of Man, and Strike Forever after were DreamWorks movies that released three a year. But yeah, usually DreamWorks releases two to three movies a year. 2021, they'll go release three movies a year as well. Spirit and Boss Baby. Spooky Jack as well, which is, yeah, still coming out in 2021. So DreamWorks is releasing three movies this year, and they're going to probably release the bad guys, and probably now there's a couple more movies made this year for the next couple of years or something like that. Uh, because, they, you know, the COVID thing is now finally over. So, yeah, that's basically it about this video. Goodbye.